Thank you very much, uh, Elisa. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, a very good morning to you all. Uh, it's really a pleasure to see you all here uh, this morning. So in the first place, I thank you for coming to join in this conversation, uh, which we have very much been looking forward to, and I hope uh, you also. And I thank all of our member states for uh, their encouragement um, over the course of uh, the past year for us to engage in this extremely important field. Now, what are we trying to do? If I may make a few um, general remarks, what are we trying to do here? Well, look, I think we are really trying to take cognizance of a number of um, quite important things that we are all able to observe. Um, I have at, le at least seven of them, um, but I'm going to mention them very briefly. First of all, we can all see that a relatively new, and I think it's probably incorrect to say new, but a relatively new general purpose technology is unfolding across the economy and society, and it is having already a profound impact, and it will, uh, we all believe, have uh, a, an extraordinarily profound impact on us in the future. So that we can all see. I think uh, that's uh, number one. Number two, we see, uh, all of us, an increasing range of commercial applications deploying artificial intelligence in society and in the economy. Uh, and we see a lot of investment uh, now channeling uh, on the part of major corporations into uh, artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, I think number three, uh, when we look across the world, we see a very uneven capacity in this field. Uh, and this is something that, as an international organisation, we really need, do need to take cognizance of. Um, there are clear leaders uh, and there are trailers. Uh, and we uh, need to, to be aware that, of course, there is a major technological gap in the world, and this new general purpose technology risks exacerbating that, um, that gap. Um, number four, I would say uh, we can all observe also that artificial intelligence is engaging widespread media attention and widespread public attention. Uh, and that attention, I think, is sometimes uh, a matter of wonder. Uh, it's sometimes a matter of deep anxiety and concern. Uh, and we do need to take cognizance also of this generalized um, attention on the part of public, or the public on this new area. Uh, then I would say uh, we also need to note uh, that governments around the world are starting to engage or have engaged uh, in respect of uh, artificial intelligence. We see that that engagement is increasingly deep uh, horizontally across governments but also um, in the uh, growing number of governments that are getting engaged in this area. I think in terms of government engagement, uh, I would say there are pro probably roughly three types of engagement that we're seeing on the part of governments. Uh, and maybe a government has all three, but uh, first of all, there is uh, the engagement on the part of strategic thinkers within government. Uh, in the positioning of industrial and uh, or post-industrial uh, economic strategy. So we are all aware of a number of strategy papers that have been put out by a number of governments uh, around the world in this uh, particular area. Uh, secondly, I'd say we're seeing an increasing number of governments deploy policies uh, in respect of uh, and strategies in respect of uh, artificial intelligence, for example, opening up government data for commercial uh, uh, enterprises and applications. So that's another thing that we can see. And then number three, in the third place, I think, 
um, we see the commencement of, quote, regulatory, unquote, initiatives. So that is, I think, different. Uh, you have strategy, you have um, how can government be useful and support commercial applications in AI, and number three, we're going to regulate this in one way or another, and that we see commencing now. So uh, that, I think, is, uh, is quite apparent. Now, um, let me, I've got two other general uh, propositions, uh, and the next is that I think it's a general purpose uh, technology. We see that artificial intelligence is, of course, raising a very broad and multidisciplinary multi uh, range of policy questions. Uh, there are many disciplines involved uh, in this. Uh, I won't go through them. We'll have the opportunity, and you'll have the opportunity to discuss them in the course of the day. I simply would note that one of those questions is property uh, and intellectual property. It's by no means the only one, but uh, it is one of the questions in this broad range of uh, policy uh, challenges. Uh, and then lastly, uh, let's note, uh, given where we are, that it is an international question, or a question that has international dimensions. Uh, and uh, ultimately, I think we're in a situation in which technical interoperability is going to depend on regulatory interoperability. And if we see regulatory initiatives going in all sorts of directions, mm -hmm we're going to find ourselves in a difficult position technically. So um, the flows of data, the different regulatory initiatives that may be taken or are being taken, the networks, the value chains are all telling us that this is very much an international question or at least, of course, it's a national question, but also, it also has an international dimension. So on the basis of all of that, we have been, as an organization, trying to engage in this field of artificial intelligence or commencing an engagement. So what have we done? Very, very briefly, as you know, we published a, I think, a fairly major report earlier this year, at the beginning of this year, um, landscaping scientific publications and patent applications in the field of artificial intelligence since the beginning of artificial intelligence in the 1950s. Uh, that was simply providing empirical data for a, a policy discussion. Secondly, we have been developing tools, artificial intelligence applications. We will be showcasing them later on uh, in the day, uh, so I won't go into them here, but we have been uh, developing these for the purpose of the administration of intellectual property. Uh, that's our mandate, of course. Thirdly, we've been trying to participate widely uh, with member states. Um, first of all, uh, we have organised with the UK uh, Intellectual Property Office um, a, an event, a conference on uh, decoding IP. We will be uh, organising with the Copyright Office of the United States of America early next year, an event on copyright and artificial intelligence. We've been uh, involved the authorities in Dubai with um, various events uh, uh, on artificial intelligence where they're taking a leadership role. And we've been very much involved with our uh, sisters across the road, uh, the International Telecommunications Union in the AI for Good summits. So um, we see uh, a growing demand on the part of our own member states for engagement of this organization in the field. So now uh, I come to f finish these uh, remarks and just to say that that's the general setting that we see uh, for this organization, uh, the things that we must take note of. Uh, and I hope today this is a step moving towards a more serious engagement on the part of the organization uh, in the field of artificial intelligence. Of course, I wouldn't suggest that our engagement has not been serious, but moving up one uh, level slightly now, uh, and it's an opportunity 
very much for the exchange of experience and knowledge and bringing together uh, those who are involved in this in the enterprise sector and in the government sector throughout the world from the different perspectives. Uh, and um, I really thank you all again for uh, coming um, and we're looking forward to the conversation today.